This is MJ. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm an author. I'm an artist. I'm an analyzer. You can find all my work at MJMunoz.com. I'm not sure why I'm laughing. I was just singing to myself as I'm getting ready for this uh, next episode of... Oh, man, those Google documents are cool. This next episode of Digimon Chronicles, where I'm going to be talking to you about my thoughts and reactions to Digimon Seekers uh, Chapter 1... Four, chapter one, part four, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm in a good mood because uh, you know why not? Why be in a bad mood if you can avoid it? Why be in a bad mood? Right now, I'm vamping because I'm looking for my notes because I made a note because I've been talking to a, a certain young man here on the YouTube who's uh, been very nice and helpful, and I wanted to give him a shout out. Um, so yeah, so this is a uh, Joseph Michael twenty three on YouTube. Uh, I want to give him a shout out because uh, he pointed out to me that this. Uh, on Kun, which yeah, on Kun on Twitter has done a uh, a fan translation for uh, Digimon Seekers, and I believe it's a lady. I think she's going to keep doing it. Uh, she said it might on Twitter. She said it might be spur no at the top of the document. She said it might be sporadic, but uh, oh, I'll include the link in the document or in my uh, my show notes on YouTube and on the the website on uh, mjmunis.com as well, so you can read that. But you know the it's a trans it's a I don't know if it's a scrub technically or not. Because I don't know if she's working directly off the Japanese text or if she's taking the English and then just smoothing it over or what. But uh, she does say that she's smoothing it over uh, just for readability. And I checked the word count. It's a couple hundred words longer, uh, this, um, her document, than the, uh, just like the, what they put on the Seekers website. So, not a big deal. Um, you know, I hope it's cool that I'm sharing this here and reading it here. Uh, if not, you know... On Kikun, let me know and I'll stop. But if, if not, if you don't mind, I'll keep doing it because if this reads better, then I think that would be better than not. Because uh, when it's reading uh, laughably badly, that's that's not good. Nobody wants that experience. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to give it a couple seconds pause and I'm going to go right into Digimon Seekers Chapter 1, Part 4. Digimon are alive, Ryu Senji had said. Well, it would be a lot of fun if Digimon were really alive, Eiji said. There are fanatics out there who keep Digimon like digital pets, and then there are collectors like you. But for code crackers like me, Digimon are like a useful AI tool. For Eiji, Digimon are valuable work tools. He favored using Tyranimon, a relatively common capture in the digital world, which meant they could often be traded on Grimm. Hmm. So, when and where are you going to have this Digimon land thing? It's been shelved for good, Ryu Senji let out a sigh of disappointment. Oh dear. Realistically, it was hard to enforce. That's why the digital world remains a secret to mankind. At Ryu Senji's words, Eiji flashbacked to the images of the plane crash that he had just witnessed. Yeah, I guess it would be, since there are people out there who use Digimon for crimes. People in the same business as me, although they're more of the nasty sort. While codecrackers are generally in the gray zone, there are some even among them who weren't completely morally bereft, and some who were. There were some who were gray, but close to white. Then, there were those who were gray, but close to black. Some of them weren't so bad once you talked to them, while others were truly crazy, or flat-out criminals, or the enemy of all mankind. Anyway, network failures, information theft, through unauthorized access and cyber terrorism had been occurring frequently here and there in recent years, and Digimon used as AI tools actually had a lot to do with it, like what Eiji had seen in that video. There was actually <clears throat> excuse me, there actually was an incident of a terrorist using a Digimon to bring down an airplane. That information, of course, had not been made public. The general public did not know about Digimon or the digital world. World leaders and international organizations were quick to cover up their existence. Besides, it would become too great a scandal if characters at a theme park were used by criminals for acts of cyber-terrorism. Just imagine. If the public found out about the digital world and Digimon, it would lead to revealing to the entire world the existence of Digimon crimes, Ryu Senji said. What do you think would happen if we did that? Mass chaos. Exactly. The media would probably come up with sensational titles for clickbait, like how Digimon were invaders from another world or something. The easiest and simplest conclusion that would be drawn from such an emotional state would be that the digital world and Digimon are evil. <clears throat> A majority of mankind does not yet know about the digital world. Even if they did, they would not understand it. Ryusenji's words sounded genius and profound, and they were difficult for Eiji to understand. They would not understand that there lies another world beyond the network that is different from our world, and that Digimon are actually alive. 
Even if they knew about it, they would not understand it. Professor Ryusenji, A.G. felt as though those words had been said to him as a code cracker, as someone who used Digimon for his job in the digital world. Digimon are living creatures. Cracker Fang, A.G. Kun, don't you want to know about the real world and the digital world? The truth of the two worlds? Don't you want to see what lies on the other side of it? Well, of course I would. A.G. was immediately excited. I mean, I know nothing about it. The digital world, to me, is nothing but the information on the black and white screen of my digital dock. But the world that you're seeing, the world that you saw, Professor, it's different, isn't it? Like what I saw in that video. That sea of networks, the real world and the digital world, and glimpses of that world that lay beyond the static. Do you know why that video in D4 is top secret? Ryusenji asked. Why it's kept secret from the public? Because, Eiji had a flash of insight, it's real? It wasn't a fake promotional video, but an actual video of the digital world? Yes, that video was AI generated by our observational data and composited as an imagery of the true digital world. And the Digimon really do live there, in the digital world. Turns out that the real extraterrestrials came from our digital network, not from outer space. Ryusenji looked into Eiji's eyes. What he spoke of wasn't a metaphor or an abstract way of looking at things. Digimon are alive. Eiji looked at the hololized Modoki Beramon. It was alive. If that was the case, then the Tyrannomon that he'd been using as an AI tool were also alive? And all the other Digimon too? To see firsthand, Ryusenji said gravely, with my own eyes, the natural digital world and the Digimon in their own habitat. To see the digital world directly with all of my five human senses and not through virtual monitors or observational data. To break the constraints between the real world and the digital world. To experience it as it actually is. That is what I, Tomonori Ryusenji, have devoted my life to researching. Everything I do is and has been done for the sake of D4. The data transfer of Madoki Betamon was finally completed. Ryusenji ejected Eiji's Digimon dock from the device and picked it up with his fingers to peer at it. Ah, uh, thanks, Eiji extended his hand. Snap! Ryusenji tossed the Digimon deck aside. What? Without any time to react in surprise, Eiji slid across the ground and intercepted the Digimon dock before it fell into the trash can. What was that for, Professor? He'd leapt forward so vigorously that he'd face-planted straight into the trash can. Eiji had made this dock from used parts. Even though it was mostly junk, it still cost him a lot of money. There was an error in its memory. Seriously? Ryu Senji is a Digimon collector, so he was more careful than most about the condition of his data. You shouldn't use outdated equipment, especially if you're working a job for me. That almost destroyed Modoki Betamon's data. Still, you didn't have to throw it away. Freelance code crackers aren't exactly swimming in money like big corporations are, Professor. I can't pay for everything out of pocket or ring up a bill or use all the high spec equipment that's there or that's here whenever I want. Hmm. Hello? AG was puzzled. Ryusenji's response was a little strange, but he was, after all, a genius scientist of the highest caliber in Japan. He could be forgiven for coming across as a bit eccentric. <clears throat> I apologize for that, but, well, that makes for perfect timing. Hold out your arm. Huh? Eiji didn't know how the timing was perfect, but he did as he was told. Ryusenji attached something to Eiji's left wrist. Eiji swallowed hard. When, he, when had he last felt something like this? When his parents had bought him a new video game console as a kid? When he'd gotten his first smartphone? No, that was a thousand times. This was a thousand times greater than that. He felt as if the entire world was expanding just by wearing this thing. It's yours. It was a wristwatch-like gadget. <clears throat> Is this Abaddon Electronic state-of-the-art Digimon dock? And a smartwatch type? AG felt like jumping up and down and doing cartwheels. AE's products were easy to modify into Digimon docks, and thus were highly regarded among code crackers. And this is a genuine AE product, because it involved Digimon. It was a trade secret. A Digimon linker. <clears throat> this is the prototype of a product that I've been working on. Professor Ryusenji, I already knew this about you, but you are amazing. On Eiji's arm, the wristwatch Digimon dock began to set itself up automatically. 
Well, I'm also the technical director of the Digimon Dock Division. This device has a biometric vital sensor, so it can only be used by you, the person to whom it's registered. Oh, so it's made for me. It has a medical device class sensor that records pulse, blood pressure, respiration, body temperature, and so on. And it comes with a 24-hour medical support system VR life support. I'm about to get so healthy, AG responded enthusiastically. It also has a hololization function. Normally, Digimon hololization is only allowed at DDL and a few other authorized facilities, but this is a special exception. Anyway, it's special. Special, special. He was given special treatment. But you're giving me the prototype? Are you sure? There must be some kind of catch. Relax. This is simply a gift from me to you. Oh, wow. But here's the thing. Yep, I knew there was a catch. I'm starting to catch on to what kind of person you are, Professor. Well, he said that jokingly. AG had no intention of parting with his smartwatch Digimon dock. He wanted it. The Digimon linker had functions that were, without exaggeration, in a different league. Even leagues from AG's DIY dock. I want to see what Cracker Fang can do with it in this next job that I have for you. I'll do it. Well, that was fast. Good, good. That's what I like about you. Ryusenji took Eiji's arm and pressed a switch on one side of the Digimon linker. The screen glowed faintly. A mysterious flame seemed to flicker from the lock screen. From the clock screen. Lugamon, child level, magical beast type, virus species. A Digimon that he had never seen before sat there on the color screen. Eiji squinted. A puppy? A dog? After receiving the new job request from Professor Ryusenji, A.G. passed through the gate alone and returned to the reception hall on the first floor. Break the constraints between the real world and the digital world, huh? The hollow-eyes, tricolored object was back in the center of the hall. Oh, hello again, Hatsune spoke up uh, at the reception desk. Do I return my pass here? You can put it here, thank you. A.G. gave her back his pass. Hatsune noticed the device on his arm. Oh, this? Professor Ryusenji gave it to me. Do you know what it is? It's a Digimon dock. A.G. showed off his new smartwatch gadget to Hatsune. Hatsune looked around quickly and then whispered back, Isn't that the new secret model? She seemed to be well informed of company rumors. Maybe that was a perk of her position as a receptionist. It's a prototype, though. I'm just doing a test run. Wow, that Professor Ryusenji himself asked you to test it out? He must really trust you. Hatsune seemed to be genuinely surprised rather than buttering him up. Hmm, I wonder. I mean, do you really think so? Absolutely. I mean, despite his appearance, Professor Ryusenji is so... Hatsune lowered her voice. He can be a bit difficult to work with. Oh yeah, he is a peculiar one, Eiji said, trying not to laugh. Hatsune's attitude towards him was completely different from when he first saw her, but that wasn't a bad thing. I'll see you later. Oh, Nagasumi-san, you can call me Eiji, then you can call me Hatsune-chan, or Hatsu Hatsune-chi, whatever you want. So, about your entry form, I noticed that you left out your occupation. If you don't mind me asking, what should I put there? Hatsune looked at him expectantly and fidgeted. My occupation, Eiji thought about it. Being a freelancer wasn't exactly an occupation. It must, it just meant that he had no established job. I'm Eiji Nagasumi, a code cracker. Huh? Hatsune's reaction was the most doubtful that he'd seen her all day. And that is the end of chapter, uh, or part four of chapter one. And let me see, what did that take in terms of length? That was probably, I don't know, a 12 minute chapter. I kind of, uh, wasted a lot of time in the beginning, sorry. Um, trying to get a hold of myself. But uh, yeah, about a 12 minute chapter. I honestly preferred reading that um, human adjusted human touch translation. And uh, yeah, um, I like that. It, it was a lot smoother, it had a little bit more flavor and personality. Um, so I really appreciate that very much. And now I'll go ahead and give you my thoughts. Uh, as I'm not reading anymore, I'm gonna <clears throat> step out into the wilderness and you're gonna get more street sounds and such. As it's break time, people are walking around, you know, doing what they do, trying to catch a break before they go back to the monotony of work. But yeah, so uh, 
I like this. Um, at one point, I started giving Ryu Senji like a little bit of a t the tiniest bit of like a Professor Oak uh, voice, um, just to help distinguish the two of them from each other. And I definitely think the character voice came through better in this. Of course, could have been. Excuse me. Um, was it, it? Well, anyway, the translator's translation, Kane Coon, I think. Anyway, it's there. It's linked in the notes, so you can find it. Um, but yeah, I I like this. The only thing is now I kind of regret not having read one through three with this version. Um, but anyway, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, I would like to get a little bit more of a clear uh, a clear translation with a single voice as opposed to. You know, if they're using machinery to do it, then is it the same machine or the same software? They're using different ones? I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, I felt like there was a lot more action in this, even though it was still just dialogue between the two of them. Um, <laughs> the shtick about him, uh, about AG, like, slamming his face into the trash can, uh, it felt very anime. And uh, there you go. I mean, I guess this is, uh, you know... It's anime and novels, you know, like a, like a light novel type thing. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It didn't seem too extreme or too silly or goofy. Uh, and I like that it shows, you know, how much AG cares uh, for this thing. Like, it's funny that he's like, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a, a you know, early Peter Parker vibe where he's like, you know, <laughs> dependent upon the money. And like, he needs to be careful that he doesn't waste money or, you know, have money thrown away. So AG's, you know, super protective of his, uh, his dock or his link that he was using um that he'd made himself but you know it's cool the professor gave it to him i feel like there is more of a catch to uh him being lent the device or given the device than the professor is letting on but we'll see how sincere he is as as the story unfolds um but again like i said the professor oak kind of thing like here it's convenient what perfect timing take this device electronic device for me and use it on your journey and tell me more about this world of monsters like oh okay that's kind of weird like you know i don't know if the people writing this and i'd love to know who the writer is of the story um the author is it mellow m-a-l-o is getting the credit for doing the uh the character designs and the the sketches that appear in these chapters um which is good good for them but i would like to know who the writer is and uh i wonder how comfortable the Digimon folks are, I mean, obviously they're somewhat comfortable because they're letting it out there, but with the fact that this could be accused of being, you know, a Pokemon-ish ripoff, you know, even more so than it has in the past because of this whole, you know, old man professor having a young guy go out and collect data for him on monsters and stuff. That just, it just seems kind of weird. Uh, I thought they were going to go into maybe like the moral implications that the Turinamon that um, AG was using, like one of them died. And, you know, is he sad that he missed his friend? Does he feel weird about capturing and, you know, potentially enslaving uh, these creatures? Was like, that was always my beef with uh, like Pokemon over Digimon. I said, well, um, I tried really hard to play Digimon games, even like Cyber Story. I just couldn't hang with it. Um, but whatever. Uh, but, you know, there's the, the meme of, uh, you know, watch Digimon play Pokemon. I agree, because watching uh, Pokemon is just like, you know, repetitive, boring, same thing over and over again, not very exciting. You know, Ash is the protagonist. Was it for 30 years or what? He just retired, right? Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's really, really silly. Um, but, you know, I always love Digimon because of the character arcs and the stories and the drama and everything like that. And, like, you know, the, the Digimon, as Kuzuna showed us, which I won't spoil Kuzuna, but basically, like, the premise of Kuzuna where the Digimon are, like, this almost like a shadow self or almost like this other part of the Chosen Children or the Digidestin that, like, helps them through these things and helps them grow up and, you know... <clears throat> propels them along as people like it always felt to me like that was the intention of the digimon especially like when oh gosh when matt was in the the pit of despair in the pit of darkness and gabumon had to try to get had to try to get him out and then like um i think sora was stuck like that at some point too and like joe and matt were helping out and i i remember mostly because i'm assuming it's jeff nimoy's joke one time my grandma was like this and it took 10 of us to get her uh you know off of the toilet because she was stuck there um <laughs> anyway, uh, I like the Digimon dubs. What can I say? So, uh, yeah, I, um, uh, now I'm struggling to remember how I got on that tangent, but it was a good tangent. Um, oh yeah, the, the Pokemon and, and, and Digimon comparisons. So I feel like this is opening itself up to being compared to Pokemon more so than not. Um, 
And I don't know that's a good thing, but then again, I always believe that Digimon has had the stronger story, uh, even if the you know gameplay aspect of it has been weaker, but this is a story. And if you're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, um, you know, Pokemon story versus Digimon story, I think Digimon wins every time, pretty much. So, uh, that's good. And... Yeah, we have the the introduction sort of of, of Lugamon, and I'm guessing this Hololize thing. Um, so I, I will confess that uh, I, <coughs> excuse me, in like 2022 ish, I I've never been out of Digimon, but I've never followed it super closely except for a while um, when I was a lot younger. But I kind of got back into it with Karn EX or Karn whatever, um, who. Uh, I actually got exposed to from Toku stuff early, you know, years and years ago, um, like maybe four or five years ago, and just he'd kind of, you know, been tangentially on my radar, and then I saw Digimon stuff, and I like mainlined a bunch of his stuff, and then, you know, here I am now, um, trying to take him down from the inside. That's a joke. It's an utter joke. Anyway, um, but uh, oh my gosh, I'm so distracted. Sorry. I get self-conscious about these giant vehicles that drive by and how they're ruining the audio potentially, and then I lose my track. Uh, I lose track of what I'm saying, and then, you know, that makes it even worse. So, <clears throat> I apologize for that. And, uh, Karn, Digimon, Pokemon, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. But, overall, I think this might, this in the and part one of chapter one are the best i'm not saying they should have cut out chapter two and three especially because you need like the the reference to the d4 that happened in uh that happened earlier uh in i think part three to make it all make sense but like uh i guess okay now it makes sense if ag thought that that plane being crashed as a digimon crime were like people literally died um was fake and all part of like an ai thing now i understand why he didn't have as strong a reaction to it as he did and of course had i been reading all this in one single chapter of a book i would have gotten to it within that chapter um but i will say if this if we're really getting six or seven days a week and it's like a thousand or yeah if we're really getting six or seven parts of this first chapter and it, they're all about a thousand words they're more than a thousand but if they average a thousand let's say um that's too long of a chapter for me. This is not Tolkien. This is not The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings. We don't need hour-long chapters. And um, so far, I'd say this one was 12. The previous three were around 8 or 9 minutes. So 8, 8, 8, 24 plus 12. That's 36 minutes already of a chapter reading. And that's that's a long chapter. Um, you might want to rethink the length of your chapters if that's how long they are. So, But then anyway, we've had like seed ch scene changes. So like that... F <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That first part of chapter one could have been its own little chapter and then been broken up differently. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on a bunch of stuff in general, Pokemon versus Digimon. That's my thoughts on how this is being broken up as a, you know, actual book and, you know, the book chapters. Um, and, uh, I don't know, unless they're going to rename these and have this be, you know, very short chapters of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that'd be okay with me. Um, although the all the stuff that's happening in the lab i think should be one longer chapter because that's how the flow of it goes it's kind of one scene one idea it's ag being introduced by reus ng to the fact that the digital world is real and getting his digivice and being sent on a mission that's that's one whole idea one concept that's being handled so that works as a chapter <clears throat> i'm talking too much i gotta go get some coffee anyway <clears throat> thanks for listening check out the next one i promise to ramble less in the next one maybe i'll give myself like a five minute timer of uh mac five minute timer maximum that i can do uh, in the reaction so i don't just ramble and talk forever so anyway until next time folks uh be well and uh check out the channel um it's it's in the link it's uh jo joseph michael let me say yeah joseph michael 23 and check out uh, on kekun their translations and i'll have the links for them in the show notes and i appreciate uh what the two of them are doing and uh, them introducing me to this scrub slash fan translation of Seekers that I think I'll be reading from in the future as long as nobody objects. Um, yeah, as long as nobody objects. So anyway, until next time, folks, take care. I hope you enjoyed that. Go to mjmunoz.com to leave any questions, comments, or other feedback you might have. There you can find all of my analysis, art, and fiction. I cover books, tokusatsu, comic books, anime, and more. Look around, you're sure to find something else that you'll enjoy as well. This has been a Story Over Everything production.